get yourself into a, a, a routine. Like you said, I started out from the beginning and you 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 automatically expect once you get thrown into the fire and everything's starting to start going well, it's gonna be that way for the entire part time during your career. And it just doesn't work that way. Y'all know that just as well as I do. When you hit a bump, you gotta kind of get back on the horse as quick as you can um, and, and not wait or, or be hesitant about getting in there. And it took me a minute to kind of get going. And it took Dr. Bradley telling me, hey, you're, you're fine. You're actually stronger than what you think you are. And it, take me, it took me getting rolled up one good time in practice to realize that I was okay. And then after that, I was fine. I was ready to go. Then, that, you know, I was also diagnosed with diabetes, so I was dealing with that as well. So, but just injury-wise and, and going through what these guys are dealing with COVID, find your routine, get into it, and, and just stick with it, and, and try not to worry about what you can't control. Good call. That's, that, that's, that's good, sound, sound uh, advice, life advice. Yeah. You can't control it. So you do what you can handle, what you can control. And you can't really, you can handle keeping your mask on. You know, hopefully you got vaccinated. Being smart, like right now, what I think is one of the hardest things for these young guys is, is that I'm helping coach over at Auburn. Our freshmen didn't have a normal freshman year because they we kept them isolated from everybody. They didn't get to enjoy their freshman year. Same with these players. I remember being a player. You want to go hang out in Pittsburgh. You want to go have a good time. You want to go do all this stuff. But COVID is keeping you from doing it. If you do it the right way, then you keep yourself from being exposed. So I, I can understand that. That's great insight, man. Because you came back. Uh, I thought you were phenomenal when I was watching. Because I, I always love to watch the line play. Uh, yeah. I'm a big guy myself. You know, I just love seeing the big guys hit. And, you know, you never got the credit you deserve because you were playing on there with some real – Supplies, hey, man, they yeah. were great. Uh, so you, you get a little overshadowed, but man, no, no that I never thought you can I think you gave them the best draft class that we had. We hit on everything, and you were the first one, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I came in with a great group, man. I yeah. really did. You, Antoine, and Larry Foote, and Lee Mays, and, you know, you had Chris Hope in there. Yeah, um, I had, I had a great group of guys, Kiesel in there. Wow. You know, your first was right. his first year as an uh, undrafted free agent. Yeah, man. So I, I mean, that that group, we all still talk to each other and everything, man. So I, I really do um, miss that time being there and and then just seeing how everybody's kind of flourished and went in their own direction. But like you said, I was on the offensive line with with Allen and Jeff and Wayne Gandy and Marvell was playing well. Yeah. You know, and then Big Max came in there. You know, so it, I, I was I was part of a really good group, man. I really was. What was it like playing with a guy that's way overdue to get in? And now Fanica, I mean, that's one of my favorites growing up as a kid. Um, what's what was it like playing alongside of him? I got caught a lot of times. No lie, fellas. <laughs> I got caught a lot of times watching Allen. Uh, I've, I've probably blocked, but you know how he was always out front, yeah. running downfield. And you get caught up in the moment seeing him do something and you're cheering when you need to be blocking yourself, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I, I, my, my rookie, my first couple of years, man, I was like, this dude is absolutely amazing. And honestly, I felt embarrassed if I wasn't trying to play as hard as he was, you know? So to me, it kind of, he set the standard. The standard for that old line is to go balls to the wall as hard as you can and give everything you got for that team. And, and it was just a standard. You came in that room, and if you didn't do it, you were ridiculed about it, big time. I love that. Thank you very much. That's something you don't, you know, love hearing those little stories about guys you don't really, uh, same thing, I got a great story from Matt Starks, and I talked to him uh, probably a month or so ago, so it's awesome to hear yeah. from that. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. It's okay if I ask a quick question as well, right yeah. before the pick. Of course you can. So, so, you know, I'm uh, Kendall. I'm an Auburn fan, uh, War Eagle. So, one thing I want to ask is, you've been a part of two of probably the best, not only historical rivalries but also modern rivalries in Auburn, Alabama, and mm -hmm. Steelers, Ravens. Um, going from the college, I mean, the Iron Bowl is no doubt intense. I mean, when I went to my first Iron Bowl in 2019 the atmosphere was just so much different than any other mm -hmm. Auburn game I've been to. 
but I can say the same thing for the Steelers Ravens. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, how would you kind of compare those uh, seeing as you were able to uh, play in both of those rivalries? Honestly, the only difference is, is the band and <laughs> the, I mean, really no lie. Like if there's a hatred there, there's a mutual respect, but there's also like, I absolutely cannot stand you during this time while we on the field. Mm. And some of them you don't like off the field either. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but it's something like that whole week, everybody's on edge and, and, and everybody concentrates more. It's sad to say that, but you know what's at stake, especially when it comes to Auburn, Alabama. Somebody is going to mess up somebody's season for the most part. That's normally kind of how it comes down to. Um, and, and here recently, it seemed like Baltimore, they got their thing going and it's Pittsburgh, you know what I'm saying? And it was the same way with us when I was there. It was for the AFC North. And that's a lot of time for home field advantage. And it was just a big time rivalry. And we concentrated so much more. We knew each other so well. I hurt for another good week after every game, either Baltimore or Alabama, just because of how physical it was. That's, that's awesome. And one thing I wanted to talk to you quickly about as well, Kendall, is you had one of the great opportunities as well as I was talking with Brian McFadden or, or earlier he's done some segments for us for the show as well you got to play for two different head coaches in Pittsburgh on two different championship teams mm -hmm. so what is the coaching styles like between Cower and Tomlin how do they differ and how what did you like about them I tell you what both guys are players coaches they, they, they understood the era that they were in. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to me, Tomlin really related to the young guys. The team was headed towards being young when Tomlin came in. Yeah. Some of the older guys were leaving. You know what I'm saying? You had a couple of older guys still left on there. Yeah. I, I feel like when that point when I got there, Coach Cal was still kind of in his spitting mode yeah. <laughs> and yelling. <laughs> but the team was a veteran driven team yeah because we had a bunch of old guys and he said this team goes as you go yeah you know what i mean and and he didn't have to say much tomlin had to come in and lead and and, and shake things up a little bit and, and because the team was getting younger you still had Hines and kiesel was still there mm -hmm. but it was really starting to switch over to a younger team at that point in time so i honestly think both of them were great at what they did and uh, the Steelers are on the clock. The pick is in. Are we thinking that it could be center here? I was thinking possibly Quinn Mearns. Just missed uh, out on Ohio State guard. We took a guard? No, uh, Minnesota did. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> okay, hey, I was going to throw that out there for the pick. We still got Trey Smith from Tennessee out there, too. Oh, yes. Good yeah. call. Yep. I like him. I like him. Who, who we got? But we are here. We are moments away. It says the pick is in. It, it, we're, we're still waiting. You gotta I don't wait for you got to wait for someone to walk across the stage here, man. That's <laughs> right? <laughs> Hurry up. Hurry up. That's what I've been waiting for. Yeah, my, my call is the center. If, if, at this point in the draft, I think you have to go with Quinn. Um, is that the guy from Wisconsin Whitehaven? Yes. 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 Okay. That's what I was thinking, too. Was yeah. Like, how, how do you like him? How do you like his game? Or have you heard anything about his game, Kendall? I, I, I like the way he go about his business, man. Mm -hmm. um, cool. He, I think he plays better than the league that he's in, yeah. which that's why he's in. He's in this. He's at the level. He's the best available right now. So I'd be surprised if they don't go with him, just because Steelers like players like that. Yes. Yeah. And, and they, they were. They. I heard they did a lot of interviewing with him. They liked his demeanor. He has the right mindset, and it seems like they've been doing nothing but packing their locker room with quality. Um, with, with quality people and human beings here these past few years, four years, and mm -hmm. it seems to be making a difference, um, at least with the mentality and the way at least the Steelers are covered through media. Here we go. Now. Here they come. Oh, here comes the pick. Is. Who is that that's announcing the pick? Is it a former Steeler? 
He looks very familiar. That's why I'm kind of like the face mask is the problem here. Oh yeah, the face <laughs> mask is the problem. He hasn't revealed it yet. Oh, the guys are from uh, DMC. Hmm. Okay. Oh God, he's gonna yell at him. <laughs> <laughs> he's yelling at him. He's yelling at the Cleveland people. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love it. <laughs> That's great. Uh, K Green. Kendrick, Kendrick Green. Green. Yes, mm -hmm. the offensive guard from Illinois. Okay. That was that's not that's a different one. Yeah, dude, I, I don't even know if Kendrick has any um uh, experience mm -hmm. at center or they strictly they liked him as a guard, but it seemed to me like they had the uh the guard locked down as far as for um for positional need uh for this year. So do you uh I can see him being a center. Okay, cool. I can see that. I can definitely see that. Um, you got a guard locked down. You yeah. got your center as a priority right now. Um, I don't know if he's going to come in and play immediately, but I can see him being a center. Definitely. Definitely. Awesome. Hmm. So, well, you have yeah, better in the – to, to pick the brain out of, you know, we're, we're exactly, and team. that's that's why we have you on the show, Kendall, because you are an offensive lineman. Um, you also do understand. I mean, even even though you play guard, how difficult it is to play center. Yes. Um, and now not only there's, you know, they're showing ball, tape of him right now. He did play center at Illinois as well. There it is. Wow. There it is. And they, hey, think about this too, now, fellas. And and this is another angle. Mm -hmm. Lovey Smith knows yeah. Tomlin. Yeah, oh, know yeah. what he's getting. Yes, he know what he's getting with this young man. So I, I think that's that's a, that's a wise choice. I'm starting to understand this more being on the other side of the fence. Yeah, when you know coaches, and you got a relationship with a coach. You see a lot of okay, just going to Belichick and Saban. Mm -hmm. The Patriots have picked more Alabama players in the last four or five seasons than anybody else if you if you go back and look at the history because yeah. Belichick and Saban know each other and they just yeah. they just like that yeah Tom knows Lovey Smith and he know what type of what type of player he gonna he is so I can see that I mean because it reminds me of the BJ Finney role you can play whatever he's versatile you need yeah. him to play center he's there yeah they might tweak him more towards center it's like Cesar Ruiz last year coming out of Michigan that's what the Saints drafted him for mm -hmm. the ability to play center and guard yeah. yeah, yeah, and so okay, think about it. Maybe you got Feeney in there right now. Something happens, you can plug this young man in. He's learning next to a yeah. guy that eventually he's gonna probably end up replacing. Yeah, and, you know what I'm saying. And and that, that I think that would be good. That's how uh, Trace Sermon just with, went. Uh, with was Tunch and uh, Leon Searcy year one. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a yeah. good example there. I mean, you got to start right away. How tough was that to start right away? It was extremely hard, man. It, it really was. I ain't gonna lie to you. I got blessed with having Jeff right there. Because yeah. Jeff told me a lot of things and he would tell me, hey, I know what you got on this play. Go ahead and go, because I got you covered. Because he saw stuff that I didn't see was about to happen. And I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna trust you. And it gave me the freedom to play faster and not be hesitant. You know, and I think that might, with, with Feeney being in there as much as he's played, if that young man has to get in there, it'll give him the freedom to go and not not be hesitant to play. It, it really helped. And then Marvell being next to me too, I, I didn't have to worry as much to be, to go ahead and play. Nice. And I'm reading, and it sounds like he's a, a positional, a position flexible interior lineman. He's comfortable playing uh, left guard mostly, uh, can also play right guard, plays center. He played center in the bowl game when they had an injury for their uh, their starting center. So yeah. you and, and Kendall, you know how both mm -hmm. Cower and Tomlin love positional flexible guys when yes. it comes to being um, offensive linemen because of the way that the rules are with this, you can only have 53 mm -hmm. um, dressing on game day. You've got to have your backup speak. I love this pick. The more I'm looking at it is I've yeah. seen multiple articles where it's saying, yeah, they, he could compete at both center and guard. Yeah, so and, I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw a name out here to you guys. Y'all got me having flashbacks now. <laughs> we talk we talk about position flexibility. Yes, yes. 
Remember Todd Fordham? Yes. yes. Big country. Yep. Todd, Todd Fordham could play all five positions. You know what I'm saying? And that's and that's one thing that I've learned getting into the coaching side of it. In recruiting, I always tell young men, one guys, I was like, the more positions you can play as an offensive lineman, the more valuable you are to a team. Especially if you're an inside guy, you know what I mean? If you can play all three of those positions, especially center, you got more flexibility and, and you're more valuable. Going to a guy who was just at Auburn, Jack Driscoll plays for the Eagles. Yep. I told, I, and, and talking to scouts and stuff, I told Jack during the middle of the season, I said, Jack, when you ain't got anything to do at home, you need to start snapping because you're more than likely going to end up being a guard. But if you can snap the ball on your pro day and be a center, you're going to be awesome for them. And he got in and played a lot for the Eagles, you know, and, and he, he's a valuable player for them. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He played a lot. Yeah. Well, thank you so much too, Kendall, for joining us back on the show, providing these excellent insight that we need. Your stories and, yeah. Yes. The yeah. lens of uh, your playing at for, I'll, I'll say, I got to say, we want to thank you for everything you did. Man. We still love all of our ex-dealers. Bringing that title home meant as much to us as it did to you. Uh, maybe even more, man. We look, but we, we, you guys are, buy a beer anytime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, I'm about to take you up on that, man. Hey, I'm, I'm going to be looking for some good IPAs now. <laughs> no, there we go. Nice. I, I've got an IPA right now. I'm going to be cracking a Fog Monster. Uh, okay. and, and enjoy Fog Monster, it. huh? Yeah, I'm that's about to find that one. It's out of a, it's a Pittsburgh brewery called Rusty Rail. They're in Northern Central PA. They do great beers. And this one's like an orange creamsicle version of their farm, Fog Monster. So I enjoy it. Something a little sweeter to drink, but it's a nice and uh, nice and hoppy. It got some good juice to it. But uh, you know, me, I can talk beer all night too, like almost as much as I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I'll tell you what, man, I, I really appreciate y'all giving me the opportunity to be on here. Anything for Pittsburgh, I'm down for doing. Um, awesome. I, absolutely, I absolutely love the place. I definitely miss it. Um, and at some point, I got to get back up there. So I uh, thank y'all, and y'all definitely enjoy the rest of the draft and, and your weekend. Thank you, Kendall. You as well. Blessings Thank to you and your you. family. And uh, we'll Thank talk you, to Kendall. Soon. Yep, yep. Y'all have a good night, man. Thank you. Have you a good too. evening. War Eagle, right. go Steelers. War Eagle, baby. Go have Steelers. a good one. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Oh, That's what a bad. great human being it is to have here with the Steeler alumni, Kendall Simmons.